In this lesson, we'll examine how the GMAT scoring policy can help you formulate an effective guessing and time management strategy for the integrated reasoning section. Now to begin, I'll remind you that you will have 30 minutes to complete 12 questions in the integrated reasoning section. Now, although there are only 12 questions, most of these questions require you to complete two or more tasks. So given this, you may be wondering how the test makers handle situations in which not all of the tasks for a question are answered correctly. Well, the official scoring policy is as follows. Integrated reasoning scoring is based on the number of correct questions, and the questions will have multiple integrated parts. To receive credit for a question, you will have to answer each part correctly. There is no partial credit. You will not get extra points for getting part of a question right. Here's an example of this policy in action. Let's say that a certain multi-source reasoning question requires you to complete three tasks. Now, if two of your responses are correct, but one is incorrect, then the entire question is considered incorrect, and you will not receive a partial credit. So getting two correct responses out of three is the same as getting zero correct responses. In both cases, the entire question is considered incorrect. And you can look at this policy and complain all you want, but this reaction will not help you reach your target GMAT score. Instead, you can use this policy to help you devise a test-taking strategy that helps maximize your score on test day. Now to understand what I mean, consider the following scenario. You're about 10 minutes into the integrated reasoning section, and you've just come head-to-head -head with an extremely difficult two-part analysis question. At this point, you're trying to determine the correct response for the first column, and you're completely lost. So you eventually make a guess based solely on the fact that the answer choice kind of looks like a horseshoe, which is supposed to be a symbol of good luck. At this point, you have a very important decision to make. Should you complete the task for column two, or should you guess and move on? Now keep in mind that even if the task for column two is incredibly easy, you still have only a one in six chance of getting credit for this question since you already guessed on the first task. If the task for column two is difficult, then your chances are significantly reduced. So what do you do? Well, here's what I'd suggest in this scenario. First, check your time. If you're on track, or even ahead time-wise, you might, might consider completing the second column on the off chance that you guessed correctly on the first column. Now, if you're behind time-wise, then the decision has already been made for you. You have to cut your losses and get out of there, quickly. Remember, your objective here is not to get a perfect score. Your objective is to maximize your score. So spending time on a lost cause is an awful use of your mental resources, and as a result, your score will likely suffer. Now there's a good chance that you'll have to make these kinds of decisions on test day. So you should devise a game plan for each of the four question types in the integrated reasoning section. For example, let's say you're working on a multi-source reasoning question, and you don't know the correct response for statement one. So you make a guess. Remember, at this point, even if you correctly complete the second and third tasks, the probability of receiving a credit for this question is only one in two. So what will you do from here? Will you still work on the other two tasks, or will you guess and move on? Well, the answer to that question will vary from person to person, since everyone has different objectives and everyone has different comfort levels when it comes to guessing. So there's no one correct strategy here you need to sit down with yourself and get a good idea of how you want to handle the scenarios I've discussed here. You should also consider scenarios in which you partially guess on a question. In other words, you have a hunch that a response is correct, but you're not completely sure. What will you do then? As you develop your strategies, you should also consider timing issues. For example, what do you do if you're one minute behind or three minutes behind? Does your strategy change if you're on track? As you can see, you have a lot to think about. So be sure to find the strategy that best fits you. And more importantly, do this well before test day.